Hey, welcome, or welcome back, to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know though, this is the final part of my mini-series on Disney villains. What if they were good? And this episode, no, I know you're thinking Scar from the hair, no. It is the evil queen from Snow White. So, to see exactly how I achieved this look, you have the best seat in the house. Get comfy, put your feet up and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, this is officially day five in my little mini-series, What If They Were Good? And I'm finishing off, of course, with the Evil Queen from Snow White. Because Snow White was my favourite of all the princesses. I think it was partly because she had all the animals help her do the housework and I thought that was a great idea. Because when you're 13 and suddenly get everything pushed onto you. Cooking, cleaning, washing, ironing, gardening, decorating, housework, laundry. Uh, <laughs> anyone that can help out with that would be great. Again, that, that's 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 a whole other story that I won't bore you with right now. Um, this came about this series from a painsomnia moment when uh, I was looking at the myriad of Disney palettes coming out. Yes, Colour Pop. I'm looking at you um, and thinking, do you know what? I really prefer the colours in the villains palette to the ones in the princesses palette. Which then led on to me thinking, why do the villains have such nice costumes and such beautiful makeup? Because with the exception of Snow White, all the princesses had like pink or nude or very neutral lips. Snow White had the blood red lips, obviously, which I love. Blood red lip, black hair, pale skin, green eyes, tick little boxes for me. Um, which is why for many years I dyed my hair black. And uh, I was like, I wonder what. I wonder what they would have made the villains look like if they were actually the good guys. And that's how that's how this whole thing started. Um, the things that go through my mind when I'm woken up with pain. Some are good, some are not so good so far, thankfully. Um, this appears to have been received extremely well, which I'm very pleased with. Um, this is still a teaching channel, however, so that combined with my chronic pain means I am going to be going slowly so that beginners can keep up with me and so that I don't end up with excruciating shooting pain whilst blending. So if I'm going a little bit too slow for you, there is a speed widget up there. Just speed me up. It's not a problem. It's what it's there for. Um, I'm going to zoom you in. I'm just going to talk through the two different eye shapes as well. Um, hooded lids and deep set eyes and then give you a workaround for each type of eye so that you can follow any tutorial you see on YouTube. Um, these are really good if you get an itch on the end. On the end. Um, I'm losing the plot. I am genuinely losing the plot folks. Um, <laughs> let's get you zoomed in while I talk through those. If you're a regular of mine, you know exactly what I'm going to say, so just wait until you see me wave a brush with some colour on it, and, and then you can, you know, perhaps press play instead of fast forward at that point. It's a bit too close, I'm blurring. There we go. Right, now, I have got deep set eyes, which for a long time I was under the impression they were hooded or I referred to them as hooded because I got the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I was getting transference of colours from the mobile lid to the static lid. If I was cutting my crease I couldn't just cut the socket, I had to cut up onto the upper lid as well. 
and when putting glitters on, even with glitter glue, I'd get a bare patch right through the middle. However, I have since learned from much research and much reading that I have got deep set eyes, sometimes referred to as double lidded eyes, but not hooded. So let me talk you through the differences because if you're the same as me and you're trying to do use workarounds that you've seen for hooded lids and wondering why it's not working, <clears throat> could be because you've got deep set eyes instead. So, when I relax my brows, <clears throat> sorry, and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. Can't see much of it, but you can see it. So I've not got hooded lids. It's only if your static lid completely covers your mobile lid, right down to the lash line, that you've got either a full or a part hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to have a slurp of my drink to try and stop barking at you. <clears throat> ha! Right. I'll demo with this eye because this is the one I'm blind in so I can make sure I'm still in shot and I'm still in focus. With deep set eyes, if I cover my visible mobile lid and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back away. And if I roll it up and cover the visible static lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got lid space there that tucks back away as well and it's those two parts of the lid rubbing together that gives me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, the workarounds. If you've got hooded lids, grab a brush like this or a pencil brush and on your static lid sketch out where you need your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so use slightly smaller blending brushes and you'll be absolutely fine. Um, if I'm not doing editorial looks, I'll normally leave a space between the colour and my brow. If you've got very, very reduced space here, you may find you have to take the colour right up to the brow. But that's, that's fine. You can still pop a highlight on the tail end. If you have deep set eyes, like myself, all we have to do when we're blending colours through the crease is stop, relax our brows, look forward and just check we've brought it high enough up that we can see it when our eyes are open. So, two different workarounds for two different types of eyes, which is why it's really important to know which type of eye you've got. Right. Let me grab some brushes. Now, Eagle Queen. absolutely love her makeup because it's basically purple and people know purple and green and blue are my favourite colours so I'm a happy girly when I get to use those colours and today I get to use those colours which is awesome right I'm going to start off trying some Morphe brushes out because I've got a batch of them, so why not? And I'm, uh, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF and primed, and I've gone in with my usual Crow and Pebble eyeshadow primer. This is shade Cotton, the white one. It's my new pot, and I'm already making a big dent in it. It was completely full. This is the only eye primer I use now, ever since I bought the sample pot when I got their loose pigments back in the summer. Um, I just I keep a specific blending brush. I just swirl it in the pot and then blend it across and buff it out with this. Because, you know, I don't want to poke my eyeballs out with these. Um, it goes on dry, it's not sticky, which means you don't have to set it, but you can blend on it straight away. So it's one of the easiest eye primers you can use. Uh, white is the lightest. They've got a very, very deep chocolate brown and a black at the other end of the spectrum. And then three skin colour shades in between. So you should be able to find something that will work for you. Um, I do have a discount code. I don't earn from it. It's just a code that saves you money. It's all listed down below with all of my other discount codes. Feel free to use them or not use them as you see fit. They all clearly state whether I earn from them or not. 
Right, I am going to go in. I really wasn't going to buy this palette. I really wasn't. I thought, I've got it to my pleasure. I don't need this one. And then somebody on Depop was selling it for 15 quid. And I'm like, <laughs> I've got to get it. So I've got the I Lie Like You A Lot palette. I know, I couldn't resist. And literally the only sort of thing wrong with it is a slight dent in this shimmer shadow here. But I want to use this palette. It arrived yesterday after I'd done all my makeup. Um, and you know, she has, she has purple shadows. So uh, guess what I'm using today. Uh, I'm going to start off with the Jeffrey Morphe JS8 brush. It's clean, it's just stained. Um, it's been cleaned off on a microfiber cloth, so there's no more pigment coming off of it, as you can see. Um, it's just, it just needs its deep clean, which I should be doing on Sunday. So I'm going to start off by going into zoned out. Now, as with all of these Colourpop shadows, they kick up a lot in pan. That really doesn't worry me though, because then all it means is when you're going back in for your next lot of pigment, you just pick up the new shadow that's on the top there and it's absolutely fine. So, waving a brush at you for those of you who have been fast forwarding, now's the time to press play. Now, I always hold brushes right at the end and I do circular movements in this direction coming towards the nose and then in this direction coming back away. I'm 45 years old, I've lost 14 stone, my eyelids move. But I know 22 year olds who've always been skinny little things who have looser skin on their eyelids just genetically. So by doing this very very gently moving the skin around to help prevent getting like um, you know white barcoding effect. Now I do struggle here and here to get pigment to lay down sometimes because I do get dry spots there but at the moment this is blending in really nicely. Like most Colourpop pressed pigments there. I don't think I've found one yet that, you know, I didn't really like. Hmm. I'm going to pick up the excess pigment that's laying on the top and do the same thing this side. Now this side, the one that I'm blind in, I do sometimes find that I've got, I've got really super deep creasing just here. You can see that just how far that lid stretches out. Um, I do sometimes find that this circular movement isn't enough to stop there being barcoding there. So I do sometimes have to stretch my lid out to get the pigment to blend properly. But that's an absolute last result. I will always, always start off like this in the hope that this will be enough, you know, because you don't want to stretch your lid out. <clears throat> this is one of the reasons why when I'm doing um, a liner I never put tape on my face because I just think pulling the tape back off really tugs on the very gentle skin you've got around your eyes. Right, uh, I'm going to go in with the same brush. I'm not going to bother wiping it off because it's all tonal that I'm going in with, so I'm going to go into Imagine That. Again, very dusty. But again, really not a problem. Just tap your brush back off over the, the colour. Look at that, isn't that lovely? And I'm just going to blend this in a little bit further down. So... Have you, have you ever watched Once Upon a Time, the series on Netflix, where they they kind of take fairy tales and really twist them? I love it. I love that. 
And Regina, of course, is the evil queen in that one. And the actress they've got playing her is just absolutely spot on. But it's got to be said, as the evil queen, her outfits are way better than when she's Regina. Um, I just, I don't know, I guess I'm a bit of a rebel at heart, maybe. You know, I like the look of being a bad girl, but underneath it all I've got a very, very soft heart. You know, if you're a friend of mine, it takes an awful lot for me to walk away. And it really has to be that you've given up on the friendship completely for me to walk away. Because if you've given up on it, friendships only work if you're both battling the same side. So, if you've given up on the friendship and you don't think we're ever going to be friends again, I'm not going to waste any more energy or time or effort. I'm not going to waste spoons that I haven't got in trying to persuade you otherwise, basically. That got a bit deep, didn't it? <clears throat> Let's change brush and change subject. Just cleaning that brush off on a... I've actually got a clean washcloth here that I use. Um, I used to use a colour switch. I've actually prefer using um, cloth now, either microfiber or a washcloth or an old towel. Um, I find it's much more gentle on the bristles, uh, especially if you're using natural head brushes. I mean, these are all synthetic that I'm using today. Um, but if you are using a natural hair brush, uh, the colour switches are very rough on them. Now, I'm going to go with this Morphe M139. I've never used this one before. I got it as a freebie because an order was late. I just bunged it in to say sorry. So, let's see how this one does. <clears throat> it's still a round blending brush, but it's not got as wide a head on it, so it'll be a little bit more compact, make it easier for me to control just how deep and how wide the colour goes. Uh, so I'm going to go into Filtered. Again, super dusty as you can see. And I'm going to run this through my crease. And I'll show you in just a minute. I tend to drop to do it thinner in the middle here. And then blend it out as I come along. <clears throat> yeah, you can see I can just about see it there, but I think I want to bring it up just a little bit more. Just as a tad more visible. And my eyes are open. I mean, you will eventually get to the stage that you'll know exactly how high to go. Yeah, that's perfect. When you're, you know, either moving your crease if you've got hooded lids, or when you're blending uh, through your crease if you've got deep set eyes, you'll know just how high to go so that you can see <coughs> the shade. Yeah, I'm struggling a little bit on this outer corner again. I must have a dry patch there. So if you if you find that when you're blending, you're losing the pigment, blend until you get the edges looking as soft as you want, then pop a little bit more pigment on your brush and just tap and use the tapping motion to build the pigment back up and blend it out rather than a circular movement and you should find that that works absolutely fine just like that going out for lunch with my mother-in-law today I'm actually really lucky I uh, had three mums in my life my actual mum my stepmum who is not an evil stepmother, or a wicked stepmother, by any stretch of the imagination. And now my mother-in-law. And uh, two of them are still in my life. Lost my mum a couple of years ago. But, uh, yeah, that was... That again, is a very long, not the happiest of stories, to be honest. I will eventually get round to doing a story time on it, but I need to be in 
the right frame of mind to be able to talk about it without it sending me spiralling downwards. Right, you can see what I mean here now about the little tiger striping that I get. So I always check, once I've done the darkest shade, I'll check and if necessary pop a little bit of pigment just on the tip of the bristles to blend and get rid of that. Because that is a dead giveaway that you are ageing slightly when you get that effect. I'm just sitting back and checking that the shapes look the same because I'm not James Charles, I don't photoshop the finished look and I don't use filters or anything when I'm filming. What you see is what you get and it's repeatable. You, know, you can actually achieve this look. I don't face tune, I don't fine tune. The only tinkering that I do with the film other than adding graphics and stuff to it and cutting clips in together and editing bits out when I'm waffling a little bit too much um, is I adjust the volume because I'm still reliant on the microphone on the camera so I've tinkered with the settings on that to get the microphone as um, sensitive as possible to pick up as much as possible and uh, then in my editing software I, I tinker with the settings and the, you know, the graphic equaliser basically I play with that until I get this, the volume as loud as I can because I'm aware that I do have a very soft voice and sometimes I can be difficult to hear right I'm just going this is a pad just with my cellar mm. water on I'm just gonna tidy the edges up like so before I go in with the shimmer um, I like using this this is a Jeffrey Morphe JS24 lip brush ooh not got much of that left yeah I'm getting through that one um, never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment ever now, which of these shimmers do I want to use? That's a very, very good question. They are all absolutely stunning. I think that one's a bit too blue for the shades that I've used. I think that one would disappear into it. That's blue based. I think I'm going to have to use that first one. <coughs> which is Cloud. So I'm going to pack the pigment onto both sides of the brush and then spray it. Partly helps with the fallout, partly helps with um, giving the shimmer the best chance of looking as metallic as possible. Um, it's, it's not foiling the shade but it's uh, it has a similar effect to falling the shade. Right, I'm going to look into a little mirror down here so that hopefully I still stay on screen and you can see what I'm doing. The reason I like this is because it's great for getting right into the corner of your eye. So I'm just going to run this. Over the two thirds of the lid so far hasn't got any colour on it. I haven't decided what I'm doing on the outer corner yet. I like that. I'm going to grab the uh, M139 again and go back into uh, filtered and just pop a little bit of that just on the outer third and just blending it in with that shimmer I 
do the same this side before I pop this in on. I don't always do um, a colour on the edge. Sometimes I'll do two shimmers across the, the lid, in which case I'll normally, normally, um, leave the outer edge clear so that the shimmers can blend into each other properly. But I really, really like that. Right, I'm just going to dry the brush off on the cloth so I'm not putting a wet brush back into that pigment. Go back into cloud and I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other eye. Now with the other eye, because of that deep creasing, I do have to stretch the lid out. Otherwise, what I've found with shimmers is that the pigment packs into the crease, but it packs in loosely rather than being blended out. And um, it ends up, as it dries through the day, it, uh, as I move my eye, it all starts cascading down my face. But I do it as quickly as I can. And then let go again and just finish the rest of the lid off. Like I did the other side. This really is a pretty palette. Right, I'm going to pause you while I put foundation etc on, and base products, and I will be back to finish off this eye look. Now, you will see me instantly, there will be no delay for you at all, I will see you the very next time that I press the record button. I am back, and as you can see, I went for purple brows. Uh, this is the Revolution Pigment pomade in royal purple. Um, annoyingly they don't seem to have their coloured uh, pomades on the site at the moment. Um, I think I've just got the white and the red, the, like, the brilliant red left, um, which are marked down in price. So I don't know if they are rebranding it, changing the formula, changing the packaging, or if they're just getting rid of them. I really hope they're not because I'm really loving coloured brows right now. Right, going back in with my flat top brush, I'm going to go into filtered and just continue that shade along under the bottom lashes. You can use a smudger brush for this, but I love this because it, it really gives you control. It really means you can get right tight up under the lashes. Yes, I'm flinching this side. I'm blinding this side. I don't have any peripheral vision. Um, so I'm relying very much on muscle memory and a viewfinder that's quite a long way away to uh, not poke myself in the eye. I'm not always successful in not poking myself in the eye. Right. This brush is the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette brush. But I love it because it's flat topped and it's chunky so it's great for getting up under those bottom lashes. And I'm going to go in with, I think Ghosting, I've not used that one yet. That's a, a very, very pinky lilac. I'm going to just use that to soften and buff out that lower lash line. This is such a pretty look. I think actually I might prefer this palette to the It's My Pleasure palette. Which is unusual. Right. This 
believe it or not, is a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago. And I'm going to go in with a Fenty 7 Day Weekend highlight, which is this pinky lilac -y one here. Yes, it's hard pan. But if you kind of... I need to try and do this whilst covering up the... If you kind of scuff like this, you can actually pull the top layer up and get pigment on your brush. It's not great, makes it look a bit messy, but at least you can still use it. I'm going to run that along under the tail of my brow. You don't have to use a highlight for this, you could use um, um, a matte shade, sort of two or three shades lighter than your skin tone. It just it helps to make the brows look a little bit more raised, which is it helps to open the eye up. Um, and it's actually a youthening effect because our brows do actually sink thanks to gravity along with everything else we have. And then pop a little bit in the inner corner and along under my tear duct and just blend it in with the colour that I've got going underneath. Which reminded me to take some tablets. Which I shall do as soon as I've finished filming. Right. I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck this highlight all over my face. Put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with the hair, and I'll be back with my finished look. Instantly for you. Ready? Here it comes. I am back. I decided that Regina would have curly hair because she strikes me as the sort that is like, do you know what? I was born with curly hair. Am I going to be straightening it every day? Just so that I look like every other pretty little princess. No, I'm leaving my hair au naturel and it's going to do what it's going to do. Again, I've nicked Ursula and Hades crown. And there we go. Put a bit of uh, red lip gloss on because she strikes me as a lip gloss kind of person. She strikes me as being that high maintenance. Mascara is my Catrice Glam and Dull Waterproof Volume Mascara because I do have to go out shortly and I don't want my mascara travelling all over my face. So, oh, the lip, but the, the gloss by the way is Wet Cherry in shade Maraschino Cherry from Lime Crime, in case you were wondering. Doesn't taste like cherry, didn't particularly smell like cherry, which was quite disappointing, uh, but super cute packaging like super super cute packaging so there we go this is my take on what if the evil queen were good what do you think I need an apple don't I <laughs> right okay if you are one of my regular 4F beauties, please double check you're still subscribed, even if I am appearing in your uh, suggested films, because YouTube is still deleting people. Monday, because I always make a note on a Monday morning of what my figures are for the week, or for the you know, preceding week, so I can work out which films are working out best, which films are generating more traffic to my channel, etc. And I got three emails saying three new people had subscribed to me. I'm like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. And then when I was uploading films later on that day, I noticed that I was actually down by two. So I may have gained three, but effectively I'd lost five of my older subscribers. Um, it's really frustrating, it's really not helpful at all. Um, YouTube are being gits, basically. So once you've liked and commented and maybe even shared this, just double check you're still subscribed and 
if you've asked for notifications just double check that bell still rung because you know what they're like people are not getting emails either deep joy if however you are new to my channel hi hello how are you hope you enjoyed this if you've made it this far through i'm guessing you liked it just a little bit uh, if you'd like to join the wonderful band of 4F beauties that we already have here, feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey. And if you want notifications, be sure to jump through all of those flaming hoops that YouTube seem to want us all to jump through to get emails through. Right. This is the final in my five-part mini-series of... What if they were good? But if there's someone that you would like to see me turn into a Disney princess, doesn't have to just be a female villain, I've turned Hades into a princess. Pretty sure half the underworld's going to be chasing me for that one. Uh, if you do have someone that you'd like to see me turn into a Disney princess, then by all means, let me know in the comments section. And there's a good possibility I may, every so often, chuck another one of these films in. Because, I've got to be honest, I've really, really enjoyed doing these. And the two films that have gone up so far, everyone seems to be enjoying them. I'm getting really good feedback, which is awesome. When really you're not used to seeing me wearing lip gloss. <clears throat> so, all that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time bye for now